Hello, everyone, and um, I would like to welcome you to this year's PEC Bio workshop as part of the um, ASHG 2020 virtual conference. My name is Jonas Korlach. I'm Chief Scientific Officer at PEC Bio, and uh, we have a terrific program for you. Um, it is a privilege to host today's event, um, talking about how sequencing evolved with highly accurate long reads for furthering research in, the human, in human genetics. Uh, before I give the stage to our two speakers, Dr. Emily Farrow and Dr. Hagen Tilgner, I would like to spend a few minutes telling you about the latest product and application updates. So with regard to what's new for PEC Bio in 2020, certainly uh, this year has been a very challenging year for everyone. And so we work to support the global research community in their fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, you can see here the link to our landing page, which has protocols and workflows and also already publications have appeared both in terms of sequencing the virus genome as well as sequencing the uh, human host genetic factors that contribute and have uh, are affected by the disease. We also had uh, changes in our executive leadership. Uh, very recently, Susan Kim joined us as CFO and a little earlier than that. Um, before that, uh, Christian Henry uh, took over as CEO and we're very excited about them joining the company and leading it into the future. But uh, by far the most um, impactful news of 2020 has been the adoption of the HIFI reads and the HIFI sequencing reads. And so we've been really pleased um, about the publications, which I'll get to in a minute, but also on social media, uh, the researchers voicing their excitement and their enthusiasm um, of their experience with the PecBio HIFI reads, whether it be for assembly or uh, resequencing the different applications. Um, uh, and uh, sharing their uh, results with us and the community and really uh, being excited by how much easier it is to do human genetics and genomic work uh, using this type of data. And um, I assume that most of you will be familiar now with um, the concept of HIFI reads, which are the only data type that um, delivers both long and accurate sequence reads uh, by virtue of sequencing the same molecule multiple times over and then building a intramolecular consensus to get to HIFI reads, which are defined as greater than 99% accurate and currently up to about 25,000 bases in length. The reason why I'm showing this slide is I wanted to make the note that this computation here um, on the right to go from the raw polymerase subreads and building this consensus until now has happened off instrument. So um, those subreads were uh, put out by the SQL2 instrument and then uh, admittedly, it was a little bit time and compute intensive to then calculate the HIFI reads uh, from that. And so we've worked very hard over this uh, past year and um, to put that on the instrument. And so we were very pleased um, uh, about three weeks ago to announce the next evolution in the smart technology, the SQL 2E system. And this instrument now has an advanced compute capabilities that uh, enable it to directly output uh, these HIFI reads. And so that's accompanied by a substantial reduction in the data compute, uh, data transfer and storage time and costs, about 90% reduction in file storage needs and about uh, 70 to 85% reduction in the secondary analysis processing time, depending on the application. So I wanna spend a few minutes talking a little bit more about the SQL 2E system and the data format. Uh, so now, on the SQL 2E, the output is a single reads.bam file, which contains one read per productive CMW. And most of these reads will be the HIFI reads as defined as QB20 uh, or greater. And in this heat map, that's the dotted line here at Q20. And so most of the reads above this line, all of these are the HIFI reads um, that you're very familiar with and that are so useful for uh, genomic analysis. Um, there are other reads, other CCS reads that didn't meet the um, Q20 threshold and then some single pass reads and those will also be contained in this reads.bam file. And then a filtered file, the ccs.bam, which contains only the HIFI reads and that's uh, what um, the researchers are used to now, will be automatically generated during the smart link run import. And so there is an appropriately adjusted CCS analysis report then, which has at the top the HIFI read stats. So in this particular example, 2 million HIFI reads, 34 gigabases of data, 16 KB as the insert size and the quality, the median quality Q32, so greater than 99.9% .9 accurate. 
And then on the bottom here are the stats for the reads uh, that didn't make the Q20 threshold. Uh, when we released the uh, system, there were a few questions that I would like to uh, address here very briefly. Um, the kinetic information that can be useful for epigenetic analysis is optionally included in the reads.bam file. So there's a check mark that you can uh, check if you want to uh, get this kinetic information in addition with the base uh, calls. Um, if for some reason you wanted to get the raw subreads, that is also uh, possible optionally. So you can skip the on instrument CCS and then the output will be just what it is today. And then the last question that uh, we got often um, from the community is whether the uh, on instrument hi fi computation capability will in any way affect the run times and the efficiency of collecting. And the answer to that question is no. Uh, we have um, built a system so that the hi-fi reads are generated in parallel with data collection of the next cell to minimize the overall runtime. And I should mention that the system has been built for uh, headroom for the future. So the um, SQL 2E could handle um, as much as three times uh, as much data compared to today without running into any computational bottlenecks. So then with these improvements, um, there are significantly reduced compute requirements on the SQL 2E system. I've listed them here. And just to highlight previously, uh, the requirement was for multiple compute nodes with 384 minimum cores. That's now reduced to 64. So you can uh, accommodate that with just one compute node, but there's flexibility. You can also use two of 32 each and so forth. And then with regard to the data storage requirement, previously well over hundred terabytes, and now on the order of 50 terabytes or so. Um, in addition to the SQL 2 E system, we released the software version uh, 10.0. And um, one of the uh, news there is that SmartLink is now available through the cloud. So uh, if you don't have and don't want any internal high performance compute infrastructure, that is possible now to just uh, use SmartLink in conjunction with the cloud um, that's integrated uh, at first here with Amazon, AWS, and all the different um, workflow components of uh, data streaming, analysis of uh, data sharing, and, and so forth are now enabled on the cloud uh, with the software. In addition, the software version 10 um, includes new analysis applications, genome assembly, uh, a hi-fi assembler um, that is tuned for de novo assembly using the hi-fi reads. On Bioconda, we have two new um, analysis modules, one for Amplicons with HiFi reads and the other for ISIS-seq uh, with UMI um, uh, calling and single cell analysis. And then there are the typical improvements in terms of the user experience with um, uh, improvements in sample setup, run design, bug fixes and so forth. So with these improvements, there's substantial uh, cost savings um, in addition to the time savings. And I've listed one example here for human trio sequencing. So those are three samples at 20 fold hi-fi coverage each with the cloud compute. Um, there is about a 95% savings with the SQL 2E system with regard to the data transfer. So six terabytes before on SQL 2 and now only 320 gigabytes. In terms of the compute um, for generating the hi-fi reads, there's zero time now with SQL 2E. And then uh, the application compute um, is about the same. So overall 85% reduction. And then with regard to storage, the same 95% from above, of course, applies. And assuming Amazon storage, that's about $2,000 per trio that uh, you would save on the SQL 2E system. And so uh, what that translates then to is not only with regard to reagents consumables, but also with regard to compute and data storage, um, comparing it with alternative approaches. And here's the example of a de novo human genome assembly using uh, papers that have published on 30-fold hi-fi coverage and assembly um, versus 60-fold um, alternative long read technology and Illumina uh, from this paper. Here are all the, all the uh, details that I won't go into, but uh, substantially less cost uh, associated with regard to consumables, computer and data storage. And then also worth highlighting is that, of course, the assembly that you're getting is substantially higher quality with PEC bio hi fi sequencing. The contiguity is about threefold higher. The accuracy is about two orders of magnitude higher with, in, on the threat score of a Q, a greater than QB50 and a greater completeness of the human genome. And so then um, looking at that over, let's say, a three-year project timescale, and this table assumes one year on-demand storage, 
um, and two year cold storage um, through the cloud, it uh, can save you about a quarter million dollars moving to the SQL 2e system, no longer having to deal with the raw subreads and uh, dealing with the hyper reads directly. So if this is something that you're interested in and you would be um, uh, interested in perhaps trading in um, your short read or other long read technology, we have a promotional program that's called Trade In Trade Up, where you can trade in um, your existing uh, instrumentation and trade up to the SQL 2e system. And if you're interested in this promotion, uh, please visit our virtual booth at the conference or um, go to pecb.com slash SQL to complete the form and we'll contact you. So now I'll switch gears a little bit and talk uh, a little bit about the various applications and highlights thereof that we've seen in 2020 using the HiFi reads and that can are now even more accessible with the SQL 2 e system. And um, as you know, there are um, many different applications that can now be completed um, with only one to two smart cells ADM per sample. And I wanna uh, just give a couple of highlights in each of these areas. So starting with assembly on the left, a de novo assembly, the cover of last month's genome research journal was a painting by Dr. Arang Ri. Uh, he's, she's from the NIH and is a co-author of this paper that was featured on the cover, Hi Canoe, Accurate Assembly um, Using These High Fidelity Long Reads, so hi fi Reads. So this is a, uh, a, a transformative paper showing how the hi fi Reads can substantially improve human genome assemblies um, assembling very difficult regions uh, previously with like segmental duplications, satellite regions, nine complete human centromeres uh, were assembled using the HIFI reads and uh, really uh, showing the power of um, HIFI reads for human genome assemblies. And then this was then the stepping stone for a conference that a virtual conference that happened last month, uh, a joint conference by the Telomere to Telomere Consortium and the Human Pan Genome Reference Consortium that presented the, for the first time a finished human genome, telomere to telomere without any gaps and uh, completely resolved. And the Human Pan Genome Reference Consortium, HPRC, uh, presenting several high quality genomes um, of different uh, ethnicities. And uh, here um, I have just uh, put two quotes. Uh, Adam Filippi is a, a co-leader of the T2T Consortium of Karen Miga. And Adam said in his presentation that the all-star of this assembly has been packed by a hi-fi. And Ira Hall, who's a co-PI of the HPRC, um, um, later in the conference said, as we have heard from many different groups during the course of this conference, hi-fi data is incredible and makes things a lot easier. So um, I think the content is still available, um, so you can check it out. Um, but um, I want to mention that we have on our website an interactive map um, cataloging and collecting all the uh, population specific PEC bio human genome assemblies that are at high quality. And um, I should note that it's starting to get difficult to keep up uh, with the research community because there are more and more of these appearing now using the hi fi data. There was a previous, either in um, uh, individual projects, uh, for example, um, about a month ago, there was the Egyptian reference genome uh, published. And this table is, uh, represents 28 new uh, HIFI assemblies by the HPRC that have been made publicly available and they represent uh, many different uh, ethnicities that have previously not been sequenced to such a high quality and assembled to such a high quality. So then uh, with regard to variant detection, we were very pleased uh, to see the results of the Precision FDA Truth Challenge version 2.0. Um, that happened uh, in mid-August. And um, this one showed that the PEC bio hi fi reads can outperform both the short reads and the noisy long reads. So in this uh, particular challenge, there were 64 entries, 17 were PEC bio hi fi 24 Lumina, three ONT, and 20 of them used uh, multiple technologies and a combination thereof. And you can see here in the pink, uh, in these three categories, looking at all benchmark regions. So this is against a, a truth set asking how well the technology can be used to call uh, single nucleotide variants and indels. And you can see in pink um, all benchmark regions, then difficult to map regions, and uh, the MHC region, in all cases, the PecBio HiFi reads had the best performance relative to the F1 score. So breaking this out a little bit more in detail, uh, here you see the, the ranking and uh, the top 12 entries use PecBio HiFi reads. In fact, the 25 of the top 26 use PECBio HiFi reads. And you may ask, well, what about this one? 
Uh, it turns out the Illumina with the Dragon, uh, with their new Dragon software and algorithm, that actually also contains PecBio uh, because these were, uh, this was calling variants against the reference genome, which was supplemented with uh, various, uh, quite a number of PecBio population assemblies. And so this is a, a FRET scale. So you can see Q10, Q20, Q30. So substantially better uh, performance by uh, the single technology winner was HiFi deep variant compared to the industry standard, which is Illumina G GATK, or compared to the next um, best uh, alternative long read technology. And so of course, what this then uh, relates to is the number of errors that are being made um, relative to this type of performance. And so PecBio HiFi deep variant was the winner with the fewest errors of any single technology with regard to single nucleotide variation, false negative and false positive and indels as well. Um, whereas Illumina deep variant had two and a half times more errors, the industry standard Illumina GATK six times more errors and 30 times more errors um, compared to a, a, a alternative long read technology. If you're interested in variant calling, uh, there's a poster with more detail on this at ASHG. Uh, so check out poster 3487. So then of course, the, the next interesting question is how does this more comprehensive variant detection, um, what are the ramifications for solving the underlying causes for rare diseases? And um, you know this short, short historical slide um, has of course, uh, it demonstrated that uh, with the progression and the evolution of the technologies, looking at the genome more comprehensively, looking at it at higher resolution, we have seen an increase in the solve rate. And so it's now uh, time to look at this and be interesting to see how the HiFi reads can uh, make a, a, an impact and an increase in that. And this is currently ongoing. However, we are seeing the first indications that there is a, uh, a fairly significant impact on uh, using the HiFi reads to solve uh, previous uh, negative cases. And I just want to highlight one preprint here uh, from Greg Cooper, Jer Jeremy Schmutz, and colleagues from Hudson Alpha, looking at pediatric uh, cases of neuro neurodevelopmental disorders. Um, and so they used six trios that had previously been sequenced using short read sequencing but no causal genetic variant or even potential causal variant was found. And in two of the six cases, um, they found the underlying genetic uh, cause. In one case, a complex insertion that resulted in a loss of function of this gene. And in the second case, a de novo translocation leading to a disruption in this gene. And the authors conclude, and uh, because uh, CCS, meaning HiFi, uh, can capture complex variation in addition to essentially all the variation that's detectable by short read sequencing. So HiFi uh, captures structure variants, indels, and um, single nucleotide variants uh, at the same time. It can become a powerful frontline tool for research and clinical testing within rare disease genetics. So because of that, um, a number of partnerships have been already been uh, formed and a number of programs have been adopting PecBio um, last year both the Solve RD project in Europe and all of us um, by the NIH and Hudson Alpha. And uh, just a few weeks ago, we were very uh, pleased to announce um, a partnership with Children's Mercy Kansas City um, to look into these uh, really um, uh, tough pediatric cases that have been negative with previous whole genome and whole exome sequencing. And this will be the topic of um, uh, Emily's talk, which will be right after my talk. So Emily will talk a lot more about this program and about the first results um, thereof. Then with regard to targeted sequencing, the, the very first HiFi paper um, from about a year and a half ago uh, looked at medically relevant genes that uh, were uh, not accessible with Illumina technology. That's about 5% of the medical exome. And um, at the time it showed that a, a, the vast majority are now uh, accessible and can be resolved with the HiFi reads. And um, I want to note that, um, you know, at the time there were some um, really tough genes that were still not accessible, but uh, since the technology now has matured, the insert size uh, got longer, uh, things like SMN1 and SMN2 uh, are, are even are, are now accessible. And so uh, my colleague Cheryl Heiner will have a platform presentation at ASHG 1033, uh, if you want to check that out for more detail looking at uh, either long-range PCR or the NOAMP method, which I'll talk about in a minute, 
to look at uh, some of these really tough genes like SMN1 and SMN2, and uh, they can now be uh, resolved. So just briefly, um, um, with regard to SMN1 and SMN2, um, and Cheryl will have a lot more detail, but uh, here's an example of a 16 KB long range PCR. Each line represents a HIFI read, and you can see how clearly the um, uh, reads map to the individual genes how well they cluster into the two alleles, uh, and it contains the whole gene conversion region, um, the exon 7, the functional SNP. You can see how well all those um, heterozygous SNPs are phased and just the overall quality of the data. So in addition to Cheryl's talk, there will be poster 3207 that um, talks about this particular uh, gene um, and uh, in much more detail. So because of that, uh, we have engaged in uh, uh, several partnerships, and uh, this might uh, continue. There's certainly potential in the future to have more of these. Uh, last year with Berry Genomics, and then uh, earlier in August, uh, a partnership with Assurogen to collaborate to develop assays for carrier screening uh, based on smart sequencing and combining it with their Amplite X PCR chemistry. So Assurogen has uh, great expertise in amplifying even these really tough regions of repeat expansion uh, disease causing genes like fragile X, ALS, and so forth, and then combining it with smart sequencing to accurately uh, size the repeats and to detect repeat interruptions and to get the full sequence for both alleles um, from these types of assays. So we're very excited about um, this partnership. Some of the regions in the human genome cannot be uh, accessed with PCR. They're just uh, really too difficult um, to amplify. And for this, we now have a product um, and a kit that uses the um, capabilities of the CRISPR-Cas9 enzyme system. And our congratulations to uh, uh, this year's uh, Nobel laureates in chemistry for um, the development of, of these methods and these capabilities. And so um, here, um, the CRISPR-Cas9 system is used to cut uh, on both sides of a target region using guide RNAs and then without any amplification, uh, enriching this for PECBAR smart sequencing and this workflow that's outlined on the right. And so that has numerous advantages <clears throat> because there is no amplification. Uh, you don't have any PCR bias between the normal and the mutant alleles. There is, because of the long reads, there's great flexibility in selecting the guide RNA. So you can put the guide RNA a kilobase to the left or the right, uh, depending on where the best sequence is um, for the maximum efficiency. And uh, lastly, it's very easy to develop multiplex targeted sequencing assays in a single tube uh, panel reaction. And so there's just one example that I want to show here. This is a, um, a panel of 15 uh, loci in the human genome that are associated with various repeat expansion diseases, these ataxias. And this graph here shows the human genome. So you have chromosome 1, 2, all the way to X and Y. And the y-axis uh, shows the coverage, so the number of molecules that are sequenced uh, for these regions. And so you can see these are nice uh, uh, strong peaks with at least a thousand molecules for each of these loci and very low noise. Um, so this is now, as I mentioned, the NOAM accessory kit that uh, you can order and uh, apply this technique. Uh, we have a dedicated poster at ASHG 3287, uh, so check that out if you're interested in this method. And then as the last topic today, uh, RNA sequencing um, and uh, prefacing a little bit Hagen's talk, uh, he'll talk a lot more about single cell isoseq. Of course, isoseq has been utilized um, for annotation and for discovery uh, for quite a few years. More recently, single cell isoseq has been uh, adopted and uh, uh, developed. And uh, the reason for um, doing full length uh, RNA seq with single cell resolution is because it gives you access to this richness of isoform diversity, in some cases being uh, very um, influential in giving the cells their individual identities. And that information, of course, is not captured with the typical free prime end uh, short read uh, single cell RNA seq, which is uh, just uh, counting of transcript um, ends. And uh, we believe that it is um, very beneficial to have PEC bio hi fi reads because. They provide both the read length and the accuracy that you need for these types of studies. The read length, of course, to capture the full length transcripts in one piece, and they can be as big as uh, 10,000 bases. And the accuracy is required to correctly call the cell barcodes and the UMIs. 
and um, hi-fi reads have those uh, capabilities. And so there's then high concordance uh, with the um, Illumina data for matching samples. So this is a um, um, plot showing the ranking of barcodes, PecBio on the x-axis and Illumina on the y-axis, and there's excellent uh, concordance. So a number of papers have published or are in preprint right now. Um, and I want to highlight that uh, single cell ISOSeq is compatible with any upfront single cell technology and platform. So whether you have 10X genomics or CellC or Dolomite, Berkeley Lights, MicroWellSeq, all of these are compatible and have been used in, in a variety of different research areas. And we have detailed protocols available that uh, guide and, and uh, support how you would uh, use the sample after you run your initial uh, single cell box and um, put that um, into um, um, PEC biotechnology and the single uh, into the ISOSeq run. Um, so I hope I've given you a, an overview over um, the new product, the SQL 2E, which we're very excited about. And to close the circle with the social media, um, we've been uh, very grateful to see uh, initial excitement. This was a tweet by Edinburgh Genomics uh, announcing their uh, order of a PEC bio SQL 2E, the first one in Europe. And so we're hoping that the enthusiasm that we have seen for the HiFi uh, read data type is going to now carry over to an even easier access to that data type through the SQL 2E system. Um, there's a lot of more information that you can check out about human genetics research in general, about data sets that are publicly available, about support, uh, discussing your new project, uh, your next project on our website. Um, don't forget about the trade-up promotion that I mentioned. And um, I, uh, I look forward to interacting with many of you uh, at the ASHT uh, conference. And so with that, I would like to uh, finish my introductory remarks.